to tell it as it is, with your hosts, Leon George and Leary McRae. Real talk, real issues. Thank you very much, DJ Alex, and I want to welcome you all to CCB Radio, the number one internet station broadcasting broadcasting to you throughout the globe. No matter where you are, you just tune into ccbradio.com and we are right there in your home bringing you the programs that will always draw your interest. Tonight, with me, as usual, my co-host out in Barbados here is John Kilman. And uh, we have a very interesting topic lined up for you tonight. And actually, it's a repeat from last week. Last week, the topic that we had had drawn so much of interest that we decided to do a follow-up. It is similar, but it's not exactly the same topic or the same question that we're going to phrase tonight. You know, as you know, last week we, we dealt with if due to an illness, one partner is unable to perform their sexual duty, would you give consent to that partner seeking it elsewhere? For instance, if, if you weren't able, if because of an illness you weren't able to perform your sexual duty, would you give consent to your partner or your spouse to seek that sexual satisfaction outside of Well, we had some very interesting views and uh, a lot of comments about it. Uh, lots of email, unfortunately, due to some technical problems, we had not able, was not able to take any calls. And uh, we want to apologize to, especially our foreign listeners. Tonight, I hope the technology will be a little more kind to us and uh, we'll be able to take your calls. Later on in the program, we'll tell you how you can get in contact with us and um, how you can be a part of the program. So before I start the program, let me just introduce my co-host out of Barbados, is uh, John. Hello, a very good evening. John out of Barbados. And uh, as George said, we certainly enjoyed bringing the program to you last week. And we sincerely look forward to doing so with similar energy this week. We sincerely hope you will like our presentation. Okay. Thank you, John. Yes, as I said, this program is a follow-up from last week. And and this topic tonight, if in a sexual relationship, one partner is not finding that sexual satisfaction, who's not getting it, should they have a right to seek it elsewhere? Now, Play close attention to the topic at hand here. This situation here that we're speaking about tonight is where the next partner is, is not cooperating or should I say don't want to. I wouldn't I don't like to call this a compromise, but this is because this is not really a compromise. This is about pleasing tell it as it is with your hosts. Leon George and Leary McRae. Real talk, real issues. Welcome, welcome back. And let me apologize for that break here in our program. And let's, let me just say, some of these technical issues are not on our end. And sometimes we weren't able to really do much about these. Little, just little, little that we can do about these situations at times. Um, since, as we know, we depend on an international server and all of that. So sometimes when we have these technical ditches, it's not really on our end here. And it's very little we can do about situations like this. But we'll try to see how much we can minimize uh, these technical ditches that will cause break in the program and try to <clears throat> see how much we can keep the program going. So as I was saying before... Even a sexual relationship, one is not getting the sexual satisfaction that they feel that they deserve, should they have a right to seek it elsewhere. This is a case where one partner will want to engage in certain kinds of sexual activity, and they may have certain sexual fantasies that they will want to fulfill, 
and they will want to fulfill these sexual uh, fantasies with their partner or their spouse. They wouldn't want to go anywhere else to do it. In a case like this, where one partner is uncompromising or refuse to understand and meet the next partner halfway, or refuse wrong or refuse to do it. Should a partner have the right should a partner go outside elsewhere and seek that sexual satisfaction that they are not getting from their spouse? Now I have tried to get a hold on this topic by asking a few people about this very same question. This is a question that we are going to be asking the, you, the listeners tonight. How do you feel about this? And um, you get all kinds of answers. Of course, people bring in the importance of marriage and all of that. But in many, in many instances, people live together and live very happily, but they are not married. And uh, people bring in the religious, religious doctrine to all of this and tell you that, you know, one person said to me that, a marriage is not a pair of shoes. You try it on, you don't like it, you go back and you change it. In a marriage, when something does not work, you keep trying until you get it right. Well, I have no, I have no disagreement with that. You keep trying until you get it right. But however, in a case like this, where a partner refuses to satisfy their spouse sexually. I don't think this is something you have to try or no. This is where it's not as if the person is incapable of doing this. I think this is a case where the person do not understand the importance of making their spouse happy by intimacy. And why would you have a spouse? Or why would you live with someone who don't understand what it is to make you happy? What it is to give you what you want? And you are not asking for anything that the person can't afford. Is it just as a case where the person bluntly refuse to meet your sexual satisfaction? And for me, I wouldn't say to go outside and seek it. I would say that is a choice you would have to make. You would have to examine the situation and make an opinion and decide what you're going to do on a situation like that where your partner don't want to meet your sexual satisfaction. But I'll ask you this. Are you going to rob yourself that form, that, that, that happiness that you feel that you deserve? Are you not going to have your sexual fantasies fulfilled because you have some stubborn and, and, and some partner with a lack of understanding to your needs and your fulfillment? Are you going to let your emotions suffer for it? This is a question that only you will answer. And I think if your emotions, your emotional needs, your, inter your sexual needs are not being fulfilled, I think it's going to contribute to your problems that occur in your relationship and it can lead to a downfall or a breakup within your relationship. Because you are not going to be happy, your emotional needs are not being met, your sexual needs are not being met, which is very, very important in a relationship. And I always say, while sex is not love, love must have a bit of sex in it. And sometimes when we're married, or we get into a serious relationship, if we live for 20 years, 30 years, or we stay together for that time, Less than 20% of that time spends in the bedroom. 
So really and truly, a relationship has a lot more to it than sex. So that is one of, one of, and that's the next thing one should consider that while a relationship had it, have it a, have it a means of satisfactions and joy and comfort besides sex, sex is one of the most important role. Intimacy is one of the most important roles in it. Because without a proper communication or sexual satisfaction, it does not matter what your partner provide for you materially and otherwise, if that need is not being met, it's definitely going to contribute to your unhappiness and the downfall in your relationship. And I think this is a decision you alone will have to make. It's a question that you, you the person in the relationship, who end up in this situation, only answer, only you alone can answer. I will give my personal views about this later on, but I would like to hear John come in on this. Okay, thank you very much, George. Hello to the global village which we call the world. This is John Kelman, out of Barbados. George, I sat and I listened intently to your deliberations. And let me say that you threw me back to my childhood days when I remember a little nursery rhyme which I was taught in the primary school. And it went like this. Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. And so betwixt them both, they licked the platter clean. I understood that to mean that when you are in a relationship with someone and there is a task ahead, you join together in solving the problem, whatever it is. And when you are in a relationship, whether you be married or unmarried, there are three pronouns that you should take and throw to the dustbin. And those three pronouns are I, me, and mine. There should be thrown into the sewer. But you don't throw them away and remain their void. You replace them by three others. Us. Ours. And we. We. Us. Ours. What I'm trying to say to you is this. When, as you put it, that your partner can and want, who is the dominant factor? You. Your partner must succumb to what you want with no sort of respect for the dignity of your partner who also has volition. How could you do that? Let us take, for instance, a situation where two people are involved. One person decides, my delight is in oral sex. The partner does not feel up to that. It is not something that would kick me off. Must the partner know demean themselves because you want to have oral sex when they don't even like the idea. You are talking about I. What about we? So I cannot agree with you. I don't mind what urge sex could be. It could be great 
says, are greater than hunger or thirst. It is not great enough to really put a damper on human dignity. I must not succumb to some situation which to me would be a fetishism, but to you a delight. I could not agree, George. We will probably hear what the John, other... John, what, John. Yes, well, go ahead. You said you don't agree with me. I don't know if I express an opinion on that or view. I state a situations, I state certain examples... But I have not stated my personal opinion on it yet, and I state and I state quite clearly my person uh, my personal opinion would I will reserve it for later. However, oh. you bring me closer to uh-huh. giving my personal op- you bring me very very closer to be given my to give my personal opinion. But George, really that, 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 may I interrupt really you for a moment? To... May I interrupt you for a moment? I I don't want you to think that I am saying that with your opinion, but. The word you use, you deliberately want, tells me that you are saying, why couldn't you? The other person deliberately refused because you particularly said they could and would not. I am saying yeah. they should. And that shouldn't. And that's it. And that's it. That's if it's not what the they point. really want to do. And that's the because of the point. This is a situation here. Well, one partner has sexual fantasies to fulfill yes. mm-hmm. and wants to fulfill them. Yes. Who should they fulfill them with? Not the best the person, best person to, is their spouse, their, their wife, their husband? I am saying yes. Mm-hmm. And you should dis- and hold it, you should discuss it. And um, I think one partner, each other, you know, you talk about we and I and, you know, mm-hmm. You, but it's, isn't each partner has a duty to please each other as they should? Now, you talk about a no moral dignity is going to come in here, right? And I understand. And for me, let me tell you my position when it comes to certain issue. I can mm-hmm. compromise preference. But I can't compromise principle. Principle and moral dignity has no place in the, in a bedroom where two people is private. You may I know I know this is not going to go down well with our listeners. It's not going to go down well with you. Yes, it, you it will. Oh, yes, okay, it okay, will. Okay. Yes, it will. Okay, well, you can't hear that. Okay, there's a little something there that I will explain to you when I think you make your point. Right, right, yeah. We locked away in a bedroom, you are private, that's just between you and you there. So moral dignity and principle, I don't know if they have any place there. That's your bedroom. Mm-hmm. And I don't see the selfish if you impose on your partner to please you. You will say that you are thinking about yourself because you are imposing on your partner to please you to get into an activity that your partner does not really has any what you might call um, obligation to do. Not obligation, but any desire. Mm -hmm. Desire to do. And if you Want to impose on your partner to do that? You are only thinking about yourself and not your partner feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Likewise, it will be equally the same on your partner because your partner is will be only thinking about he, his or herself. If your partner refuses, it will be equally the same. If you impose on your partner to do it, and someone said to you that you, you've been selfish, you're only thinking about yourself, it will be equally the same on your partner because your partner will be only thinking about his or herself if they don't want to do it. Equally, it's going to be the same. You raise a number of very interesting points, you know. When what you're going to get in, I know we're going to get into it a, 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 a little later on, and you talk about sex in the relationship. I, where we did where we depart, we see it now, where we disagree, 
is that the emphasis that I put on sex, you don't put the same emphasis on sex. I know I admit, I admit earlier on that if you live for 20 or 30 years, whatever, only 20% of the time, really, less than 20% of that time, mm-hmm. spends in the bedroom. Yeah. And you have, you have so much other things that couples enjoy be, besides, besides sex. Mm-hmm. Now, but sometimes when we do get into a relationship, sometimes sex sometimes seems to be the number one reason because she looks good, she's beautiful, they see that person there. What you mm-hmm. see, some people look at a person, so most times you see is like to undress them, you see yourself living together, having children, you some most of the time you see the bedroom. All right, okay. And when you get into a relationship, when you get into a relationship, you're fine. It's a lot different. There's so much other things to do besides being in the bedroom. Uh, you know, the bedroom okay. has its place. The bedroom has its place, and it has its time. Couples have so much other activities to, to, to enjoy. Okay, but what I'm saying that- to you, the bedroom is very, very important. It's mm-hmm. where everything else works from. It's from there. Mm-hmm. If the be- if the relationship in the bedroom break down, all other aspects of someone's life is going to be in disarray. Okay, let me let me react to that, George. You said a little earlier on that <laughs> you seem to put more emphasis that that was your word on sex than I do. Well, that's I, yeah. No, I can't agree with you. Okay then, well, good. I, I let, think me, about let, me, let me let me let me. Explain. Oh, what you said just now, I get I get that impression, but still, okay, I think right, so. I when right. I take it back. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, because we, we in the heat of things, we may not really grab the little oyster within uh, the, okay. the the little pearl within the oyster um, when okay. we speak to each other. Let me tell you something, George. I am in agreement with you that sex is an urge, which has to be met. Yes, I agree with that. But I want to say this to you, and I am wondering how you will interpret this. Lots of people think that the sex organs happen to be the genitals. That's not quite true. Those genitals can be functioning satisfactorily, physiologically. And in the skull, there is an organ there called the brain. George, if a couple in the pink of hell, really red hot with desire for each other, in the confines of the bedroom, where all hell let loose, if you want to put it that way, and one of them happened to look up and see somebody peeping through the window. You would wonder, how did this person get to the Arctic Circle? And if the other looks, they too would find themselves there. And nothing you do at that moment could renew your vigor. The organs are functioning satisfactorily, but the brain observes something. There's a message, a sensory message which goes to the brain. And a motor response comes back and cripples those genitals. And you can't revive them for anything. Not with that threat there. You know what that tells me? That it is the way we feel about something. And not the desire we have. That desire can go out like a tsunami onto a furnace. It can turn it off. So what I am saying to you is, when X is ravenous, and X could really do with oral sex, it is a delight for them. And why is turned off by it? I think they got to go back to the drawing board. 
Well, Jack you know, Spat couldn't... Wait a minute. Jack Spat could not eat the fat. The wife couldn't eat the lean. But they were sensible enough to say, well, me ain't having lean today at all because I don't like lean. I'm starving today. And then the other one said, well, I can't eat fat and we ain't having fat. What they did was they compromised and Jack Spratt at the lean and the wife at the fat and they didn't have enough. Your turn. John. Yeah. You said a number. You see, again, um, I want to first take the point where you talk about if two people in the bedroom and see somebody peeping at them. Mm -hmm. I think that that what you said there would not apply for every individual. I'll tell you something. There are some individuals who want that person to move quick so they can resume their activity. They were so intent, they so wanted. They, at the moment, they will get ang. In fact, they will get extreme. Some will get extremely angry I and agree want with that you. person to, to move to, to get the hell away from here so that they can resume their activity. What some I am will, saying is some with the person... Well, the, we act the same way you talk about it. They will get to the, the, I'm talking about with the person still there. The obstacle is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once the person still there. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it, the person's it, still there. You can't do anything if they're still there. Well, the person's going to get it. Trying, well, all I'm trying yeah. to say is that if the brain says no, the organs will obey. 